I figure I have all the Max videos released in this cycle on the table. For this particular video, we'll be looking at the Max Video M1 Ultra 64GB versus 128GB of memory and really find out where are you going to realize that extra potential in the 128GB. Let's find out. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Thank you to those who have already subscribed. If you're new, please consider subscribing so that these videos would reach a larger audience. All the videos on this channel are self-funded, particularly these Mac testing. If you find the information that I'm sharing with you helpful, please consider supporting this channel. I'll leave a link to my tip jar in the description, or you can choose to use YouTube Super Thanks as well. All the funding goes in to directly support running this channel and also for future hardware purchases. I'll be sharing with you a lot of information and I highly encourage that you pause the video so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to the analysis that I'll be sharing with you. And as usual, there'll be timestamp in the description so you can jump ahead to the various section. With this in mind, we are going to talk about Pro Max and we are going to particularly look at Max Studio M2 Ultra with memory upgrade. So one of them is going to be just pretty much the stock machine, which is this one. And this one, we upgrade the memory to 128 gigabytes from 64. With this, we are looking at a addition of around $800 to add the memory into the system. And we're going to find out if when you really bump up the memory that much, where are you going to see the variation? So that's the first thing. Secondly, the other thing to note as well is that I am running the M2 Ultra base SOC. I am not upgrading this to the top SOC because by doing so, I would get 72 GPU equivalent but that equivocate itself to $1,000 and based on my testing, there are very few photo apps that can really go in and utilize that. And even though, yes, you know, Lightroom may utilize GPU or Lightroom Classic may utilize GPU and export faster, but it's adding that 12 extra GPU core and spending $1,000 worth it because the M2 Ultra base SOC is already fast enough. So we're gonna take a look at the results soon. And I'll also have the Mac Pro M2 Ultra testing coming as well, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. In addition, I'll be including the result from these machines. Something to note is that on the M2 and on the M1 Max, those are going to be based on the previous testing result. And if there are any variation that you should be aware of, I will point that out when we get to the slide as well. So quick background, part of the reason why I really want to test 128 is because in the previous cycle with the M1 Ultra, I decided to go with just the stock machine. Part of it because I was waiting for Apple to release a Mac Pro, which they never did in the M1 Ultra generation. So now we have it in the M2. And the other thing is that before that, I have the Intel 2019 Mac Pro that is the cheese grater, very similar similar to the one that I have on the studio right now. However, with that one, I upgraded memory internally because you can just populate the memory as much as you want up to 1.5 terabyte. Well, I only upgraded mine to 96 gigabytes of memory and it has been running fine. So when I went to the M1 Ultra Max Studio, I'm technically going a little bit backwards down to 64 gigabytes of memory. And most of the time I'm sitting at 98, 99% memory utilization. This is part of the reason why I am bumping my personal machine this round up to 100 and 28 gigabytes of memory. So that gives you some context there. All right. Uh, one thing I want to share with you about the test configuration is that I can't test every single configuration that are out there. So these are the machine that I am going to run the tests on. A lot of these data can definitely be extrapolated. And one of the other thing I want to share with us as well is that when we take a look at Apple Silicon, just remember there are more the consumer leaning one and more the pro oriented. If you do this Professionally, my recommendation is to choose the SOC with the suffix after the name. For example, choose the one with the Pro, with the Max, or the Ultra. It's going to do you a lot of good in Pro workflow, and you're going to see that on many of these charts as well. Remember that I'm approaching this from a pro photographer perspective, one that shoots thousands of raw images all the time, and I want the fastest machine possible. And I also do video, so I want encoding to be as fast as possible to help me or assist me in my creative needs. All the testing that I'm doing are based on single app part. The reason why is because I want to see how one silicon is performing against the other and how one generation is performing against the next. I don't want to add in multitasking tests so that the results get contaminated because there are a lot of variables. So that's not what I'm looking for. Some of these machines, as I already mentioned earlier, are based on previous 
test result. These are what I call reference testing. If they're close enough to each other, they are within the margin of error. If there's some variation, I might go in and do testing again, but I'll point those out to you. One of the other things I want to talk about is optimization or pretty much the lack thereof. And this has been something that I've seen since the M1 generation already. So we were still seeing it in this cycle and I'll I'm not going to point it out specifically, but I can tell you right now with Lightroom Classic and also Lightroom, there are rear results with the M1 Ultra machine that used to perform that much faster. Now it's not performing quite as good. And now the M2 Ultra is a little bit faster, but it's not quite as fast as the M1 Ultra. It's really a weird experience testing this round, this cycle. I'll leave a link to my other testing video that I've done that outlines this a little bit more in the description so you can check that out. And as usual, this channel talks about display and calibration quite a bit. You can do that just fine with both Calibrite software and also if you're using BenQ SFU, Palette Master Ultimate works just fine on these systems. And this is how you're going to read the specs that are going to come up. Pretty much these are what they mean. And here is the sheet sheet for all the abbreviation that I'm using. You can come back here. I'll leave a timestamp to this in the description or you can pause and memorize this now. First, let's talk about SSD. So when it comes to SSD and this system, remember that once you configure them, they are pretty much set in stone. You cannot go and expand internally on the Mac Studio. But what you can do, however, is you can always plug in external SSD, hard drive, you can plug in a NAS or a DAS to the system and expand the storage. So it's not quite as dire, it's not quite as much as the end of the world as if you didn't configure enough RAM on your system. And that's the key takeaway from this. So here are the SSD speeds between all these machines. You can take a look at it right now. Pretty much they're all clustering together the same. I mean, we're having the one terabyte performing the same. And regarding the 512 gigabyte one, for example, in the M1 Max and the M2 Max, Max Studio, we can see that in the M2, there is a slight slowdown a little bit, but again, I wouldn't describe this as a dire consequence as many have put it. It may affect some apps, but the variation is very small and I'm going to point that out when we get there. And here's additional testing speed from the M2 and also the M2 Pro. You can see that if you choose 512 gigabyte in the M2 generation, the SSD speed is slightly slower, but again, it's really not a big deal. And I'm going to point that out and we get there. If you really want to know for photography workflow, how fast of an SSD you need, I'll leave a link to this video in the description that I made about SSD speed. It will outline everything that you need to know. Pretty much if you have an SSD, you're going to be fine. It's not going to be a problem. So when it comes to speed versus size, configure the SSD for the size you're going to need. Don't worry about the speed. Don't buy the extra larger SSD in order for you to get the higher speed because if you're not really going to be utilizing that size aspect wise you may not get that much benefit from just upgrading ssd to start out with so those are things to think about now when it comes to ram or the memory in the system just remember this is pretty much finite so once you configure this you built the machine there is really no way to upgrade the ram there's nothing that you can do to plug into the machine that will expand the ram in the system what you order is pretty much what you get and the only way to upgrade this is to pretty much order a new machine so my recommendation is to take a look at the memory pressure on the system start the system fresh before you go into your creative workflow launch activity monitor go into the memory tab and take a look at the memory pressure. See what kind of pressure you're using. If you're in the green, you're good. If you're in, for instance, the yellow or red, you may want to consider getting more memory in your system. And I know this may be a little bit difficult if you have a laptop, for example, with 16 gigabytes of memory, you're thinking about getting more. I mean, anything that you do to bump up the memory on your system is going to be good. But one thing that I will tell you right now is, for instance, if you have an Intel 32, don't think about going to the Apple Silicon with 16. It is not a good idea to go down in memory because you still need to use those physical memory. And one of the programs that I love using is iStat Menu 6. I'll leave a link to them in the description, but pretty much this gives you the memory pressure. It also gives you the physical memory being used and also a history of the memory usage up to like 30 days, including pressure and everything. And this is helpful to find the metrics of your machine and see how much utilization you're using the memory. So in general, I recommend 
for pros get 32 gigabytes of memory, but because we're talking about 64 versus 128, we don't have to really worry too much about this. All right, let's take a look at the result from Lightroom Classic. This is running on Ventura 13.4. All these are tested on Ventura 13.4. And this is running on Lightroom Classic version 12.3 and also 12.4. The result between these two are pretty much the same and I've run so many tests on this already. All this support full hardware acceleration as well. So when we take a look at this machine, we can see right now that the timing cluster between between all this are pretty much very similar to each other. In fact, the 128 gigabyte machine is about 30 seconds or close to 30 seconds slower than the 64 gigabyte machine. Very interesting result there. I wouldn't look too much into this saying that is that much slower or anything. These are, I would say, within a margin of error of each other. When we add in a result from other machines, this is kind of what we're seeing right now, all spread throughout as we expected. For example, the M2 Pro and also the M2. Those are like the machine to fall last on the list and you start to get the idea about how these machines are performing. Now let's take a look at the export for 1000 Nikon D850 RAW file. And by the way, one thing I want to say, and I get some comments on this, that I try to export my 1000 RAW files and the timing are not similar to yours. Every single group of 1000 files that you put in the Lightroom are going to have different rendering time for both import preview and also for export. I am using my group of images that I've been using for pretty much like a few years now and all of these tests. So I know that the results I'm getting are going to be consistent. And if you're gonna do these tests, I highly recommend that you come up with your own set of files and use those as reference. All right, with this in mind, the 128 gigabyte is the one that jumps up on top, but is only faster by around three seconds from the machine with 64 gigabytes of memory. So we're not really seeing the big potential jump from this just yet. And when we go back to, for example, the M1, that takes around 48 seconds longer. But this also really shows us that the M1 Ultra Generation, it's really a great performing machine and an amazing price point right now. Just remember that because if you're looking at a machine, that's something to consider. This is pretty much the spread with all the machines, again, with the M2 Pro and also the M2 being added to list everything cascade the way how we are expecting it. Now let's take a look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge on this one. Timing for all of these is about the same. I put in the 128 gigabytes at the very top there. And when it comes to, for example, the M2 Ultra again at the very bottom, I mean, these graphs are not arranged in a nice way, but again, timing 34 seconds between these two and everything clustered together, there's really not that much of a variation. But now let's take a look at Lightroom Classic Panorama Merge. This is taking 14 Nikon DA10 file, 36 megapixel, combining together to create a 314 megapixel DNG file. Let's take a look at this. So based on this so far, the timing for all of these are pretty much the same with 128 gigabytes coming in around one second faster. I would attribute this to margin of error of just me pressing the start stopwatch on my phone. So I wouldn't worry too much about this at all. So we have yet to see a potential gain coming from 128 gigabytes of memory on the system. Everything else as you see right now, the way how the timing spread out, if you want the top performance, Ultra are going to be the way to go. And another thing I also want to point out is that the M1 Ultra, it's pretty much head to head with the M2 Ultra generation. So something to think about there. Now, many of you have been asking for this test, Lightroom Classic AI Noise Reduction. And this is done on one Nikon DA10 file, 36 megapixel. This is a GPU based task. Even though Adobe say they use AI, I have monitored a machine and I did not see at all that Lightroom has dipped into the NPU or the neural processing engine, the ML cores of the Mac Studio or the M1 Ultra chip or anything like that at all. I have not seen that happen. I've seen a large utilization of GPU. So this is pretty much running with an AI model, but it's still using this on a GPU. And with this in mind, you can see that all the Ultra machines are performing just about the same. And we can see that the M1 Ultra takes around three seconds longer. The M2 Max takes a slight touch longer. And when it comes to the M2 Pro, that really takes a long amount of time because there are much less GPU on the system for Lightroom to go in and utilize. Now let's take a look at the result from Lightroom Desktop. This is running version 6.3.1 and also 6.4. The timing between these two versions are identical. With this in mind, you can see that the 128 and 64 gigabytes are performing exactly the same with a two second time variation. This is totally within the margin of error and the M1 Ultra is really performing just a little bit over 20 seconds behind. Now consider this for just a second. If we take a look at the price point, this is 4,799. This is 
3,999 machine. And for the M1 Ultra, you can get this on Apple Refurb now for $3,069. So between eight to $900 apart for these machines, but you are taking a look at performance jump that are not that much of a variation between the two. So some things to really think about there if you're considering these machines. All right, with that in mind, let's take a look at all the other machines in combination. With this, I want to point out that the M2 and also the M1 Max result are based on reference data. And you can see the M2 Pro is taking a little bit longer on this one. But knowing that Lightroom Classic Export have been taking longer in Ventura 13.4 and the current version, my estimate would be that these two would fall behind the M2 Ultra as well. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this chart. All right, now let's take a look at Capture One. With this, it is Capture One 23 version 16.2.13, and there are some improvement from the previous version, but that is about it. So when we compare between all these machines, 128, 64, and 64, the timing variation comes up to around 30 seconds apart between all of these. Now, is it worth it to really upgrade to get 128 gigabytes memory for just this 30 seconds um, render preview? I would say no, not at all. So unless you have a use for it, I would not even consider this. Again, when we take a look at the result between other machines, you can see the spread there. Remember though that the M1 Max and also the M2 results are based on previous testing. You can see there is a star next to the name of the machine, but this gives you an idea for how they are spreading out. Chances are these two numbers are going to be slightly shorter than what you're seeing now, but they would still, I would say, trail behind all these other machines that you're seeing. So the representation, what you're seeing is going to be correct. Now let's take a look at Capture One Export. With this, we're going to see that the 128 and the 64 gigabytes, again, less than like 20 seconds from each other. I don't think that is really a big deal at all when you consider these machines. The one good thing about this whole thing, though, is that the M2 generation is still slightly faster than the M1 generation. I mean, it would be somewhat embarrassing if the M1 generation is constantly beating out the M2 generation either because of lack of optimization or something like that, but we are seeing somewhat of a consistent result here. Timing, again, variation, not that much at all. This is, I would say, getting into like about a minute variation between each other, but again, very good contender considering how much time we really spend one more minute is not going to make that big of a difference. And here are the result with other machines. Remember that the M1 Max and also M2 are reference result, but what you're seeing right now should be a good representation of where they are going to fall on this scale. All right, now let's take a look at Photoshop. For this, I am using Digital Lloyd Test from Lloyd Chamber. I'll leave a link to his website in the description, and I am running these three tests. So let's take a look at the result here. When we take a look at this, I have the M2 Ultra 128 gigabytes at the very last there, comparing to the M2 Ultra 64, just right above. You can see between these two, the timing are just pretty much the same between 70 and 90% of memory. Let's go to medium. Again, this is starting to get into, if you have a 16 gigabyte machine, this is already filling up the memory on the 16 gigabyte machine because some of the memory already allocated to the operating system itself and other apps that may be running on the system. But when we take a look at the timing from the Ultra 64 and 128, no variation whatsoever. So the result is to be expected. Now let's take a look at Photoshop Huge. This is where we start to see a variation. Remember that 56 gigabyte file, this is much larger than what any of us would really go through on a daily basis. And if you are, this is where you are going to see the potential of upgrading the amount of memory on your system. So we can see that on the 64 right now, both the M2 and M1 performance is just about the same on these two. They are written like about a second and a half which I again would say it's within the margin of error. However, we get a timing that's close to, I would say like a third faster or a little bit more than a third faster with the M2 Ultra 128 gigabytes of memory. So if you run a task that requires a lot of memory, upgrading the memory on the system is something that helps. But if you're not constantly doing that on a daily basis, if this is not something that you do day in, day out, spending that extra $800 to save you I would say what, like 10 seconds? I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal at all because even in these large tasks, it didn't take that much longer to run. It's only 10 seconds. So some things to think about there. This is the result spread with all the other machines in the lineup. So you can start to see the result and there's a lot to talk about here. So 
First of all, we can see that 128 gigabyte memory is the one that sits at the top when you upgrade the memory to 64. For instance, it does perform better than the 32 generation. 32 M1 tends to perform better because it has a faster SSD. So the moment the memory gets filled up, it writes to the SSD and it performs faster. But here's the thing. Before you go out onto a panic, we're really looking at only about a 30 second variation between, for example, the faster SSD and the slower one. Now here's the thing, if this is a task that you run on a daily basis, day in, day out, choosing the base configuration machine as I have configured them here is probably not the best idea and you know who you are and you're probably already upgrading both the SSD size and also the RAM on the system anyway. But in all the testing that I've talked about so far, the variation between SSD speed is not really showing up that much at all and is really just showing up in these extreme tasks. This is a really extreme case scenario and I want to just really emphasize that. All right, now let's take a look at the encoder decoder engine and see if there's our time differences when we go in and upgrade to 128 gigabytes of memory. So for this one, we're talking about the Ultra, which has double DVD encoder, quadruple the uh, encoder engine compared to like the regular one and also double from the Mac. So you can start to see a comparison there. So let's take a look at the result. And it is slightly faster by around six seconds. So this, I was again, still say that it is within the margin of error, nothing much going on there, but we are getting the M2 generation that is significantly faster than the M1 Ultra generation. So if you do video, the M2 generation may be a better option for you to consider, but if you're just doing photography, I think the M1 Ultra is still a really good solid SOC. And don't get me wrong, the M1 Ultra, even if you do video, I mean, it's still performing really well. I mean, considering that it only takes about a minute and 20 seconds longer to export this 10 minute video compared to this, it's not really that big of a video at all, but you can choose the machine based on what you really need and how much raw speed you want. And obviously when you get into like the M2 Pro and also the M2 SoC, things start to slow down significantly because there are less capability on the SoC itself. HEVC 8-bit, slightly faster but only by around like three seconds not that big of a deal the variation super small and we are still seeing the m2 generation improve over the m1 generation so that is a good thing to see here's the result for hevc with all the inner machines you can compare that and take a look at it for yourself and here is the prores and we are looking for of this around four seconds improvement so Upgrading the RAM on the system for video encoder decoder is probably not the best idea possible as you're seeing right now. And if it's just not really going to utilize anything that extends beyond the 64 gigabytes of memory, I would probably say just go to 64. You're going to be happy there. It's going to be worth it. And I would argue that if you're doing video, I would probably choose the M2 Ultra versus the M1 Ultra for just the ultimate speed possible for you know, rendering and doing all these things. Here's the result with the rest of the machine. You can take a look at the, them there. And lastly, I'm going to show you the result from Adobe After Effects, and this is based on Adobe Benchmark. I'll leave a link to the benchmark in the description as well. All right, with this in mind, the M2 Ultra with 128 gigabytes is coming in at five seconds faster than the 64 gigabyte model. Again, we're not really seeing the variation in memory utilization on these machines because this is really just mostly going in and utilizing CPU for multi-frame rendering and exporting. So what does this really all mean? Well, kind of what I've been telling you throughout this presentation that pretty much upgrading from 64 to 128 gigabytes of memory will not do you a lot of good unless there is a justification for you to do so. And this also extends to the upper limit of 192 gigabytes as well. So the question then would be, is 128 gigabyte worth it? I would say it all really depends on your workflow. For me, it totally is because I'm running out of memory on my current machine and most of the time I'm running the memory pressure already at 50% if not a little bit higher so in my scenario where I have too many tabs open multiple browsers multiple different programs and I don't like to shut all these down because I'm constantly referencing back and forth I have Photoshop running Lightroom running Final Cut Pro running compressor running so I have too many programs running in the background at the same time it makes sense for someone like me. If you are more disciplined, you can probably go with less RAM. So it's something to think about there. But 64 for majority of the pros out there are gonna be a good amount to get. Now, when it comes to the upgrader, this is where you really need to think. If you, for instance, are in my situation and you already have the M1 Ultra with 64 gigabytes of memory, should you upgrade? 
I would say that if you're not really needing more RAM on your system, there's really no point to upgrade to 128 in this cycle and that M1 machine is still a machine that is performing really well. However, if you are coming from an Intel machine, my recommendation is as follows. The equivalent amount of RAM would be okay, but I would not necessarily go down in the amount of RAM that you configure on your system. Now for upgraders, I always tell you that come up with a justification why you want to upgrade. If you want to have the latest and greatest, that's one way of looking at it. But my recommendation in general is to think about like, why do you want, do you want to have a faster SOC for a faster exporting speed? Do you need more memory in the system because you're running out and it doesn't really you know, work well for you anymore? Like for instance, in my situation, or you need more internal storage. So those are some of the things to think about or a modality change. For instance, if you've been using a laptop this whole time and you want to get a desktop, vice versa, this would be another thing to do as well. I've also created this upgrade path as well. The easiest way to use this chart is to pretty much put yourself on the SOC that you are currently on. Let's say you're on the M2. I will argue that going, for example, to the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra is not a bad idea at all. So you can always go to the previous generation as well. This is very similarly speaking if you already have the M2 Max, even though they just launched in the studio machine. But let's say if you have a laptop one and you want to get a desktop, going for the M1 Ultra is not a bad idea at all because it's still a really great SOC, especially considering the price point that it is at right now. As usual, I'm going to point this out that if you're looking between all these machines and you're trying to make the best choice possible and if you're going to upgrade the Mac Studio anyway, for example, if you're sticking with the Mac, where you're going to upgrade that and you're going to go with 64 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte storage, I would definitely consider the M1 Ultra on Apple Reverb site because it's 3059, it's an amazing value and the price between these two are a stone throw to each other. Now, you can always configure this M1 Ultra with 128 gigabytes of memory as well and that is another option on the refurb site that you might want to consider as well so a few more food for thought i always recommend looking at apple refurb site especially if you're looking at the previous generation machine because sometimes you get an amazing price from there or for example from many of the retailers you can see if they're putting the machine on discount or not but the one nice thing about apple refurb site is that many times you can find a machine with a higher configuration like 128 gigabytes of memory a little bit easier than you would at a retailer the only problem right now is that it's out of stock so if you're looking to get something on apple refurb if you find the one that you want order it right away because it may not be available and the availability changes all the time now with this in mind though if you configure the M1 Ultra, the base SOC with 128 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte SSD, the equivalent M2 Ultra right now with 128 gigabytes of memory, you're looking at 4,799. So you are saving almost $1,000. And if you take a look at the performance between these two machines, the M1 to M2 generation, the variation is really small. So if you need more memory, but you're okay with a machine that's only slower by a few seconds or maybe just about a minute at most that's more than enough and much faster than all the other machines that are already on the market of apple right now this would be the thing to consider all right with that in mind i have also created a chart based on the app that you're using for example lightroom lightroom classic and you can see the soc running across from good better or best or just pretty much better or best depending on the app lightroom lightroom classic again i recommend anywhere between the pro max or the ultra and the m2 ultra will give you the top performance when it comes to photoshop in general any of these soc will do just fine i would definitely bumping up more memory because photoshop is definitely a program that can go in and utilize that more when it comes to capture one I definitely recommend the Max, either the M1 or M2, but here's the thing. I always recommend choosing the base SOC. There is no point upgrading to the top Max SOC because gaining that extra GPU, Capture One cannot go in and utilize it whatsoever. And if you're just using Capture One, putting or spending the extra money on the Ultra, it's just going to be a futile experience. You're just spending the money, but you're, the potential you're gonna gain from that, it's pretty much almost null. When it comes to video work for example final cut after effects and so forth if you want the top performing machine i would use ultra if you want a machine that's going to be faster for example in after effects and everything with more cpu core i would use the ultra but falling short of that if you're okay with having an export time that may take a little bit longer i would say the m1 m2 max generation are also great contender as well 
And regarding RAM, when it comes to Pro Workflow, I always recommend choosing at least 32. That's going to be the optimal number that you can get when it comes to SSD. If you can upgrade to one terabyte, that's going to provide a slightly faster SSD, which is a good thing, especially if you're worried about that, which I've been telling you is really not a big deal at all. But mostly, it's just going to give you more room to grow in the future. And if you can do that, that's perfectly fine. However, if 512 gigabytes work for your workflow, that also works as well. And as I mentioned in all these other videos, that testing that I've done so far, there is no one size fit all for any given budget. So really think about your workflow, what apps do you use primarily, what is your creative task, and how are you utilizing the system? If you're like me, you have too many things open, maybe consider getting more RAMs anyway. And if you're coming from Intel, definitely get the equivalent amount of RAM or more on the system, but don't go down because you think is a unified memory and it's going to be better. So those are just some of the advice that I have. Anyway, hope you find this helpful. I'll have more videos coming, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new and in Art We Trust.